Welcome. This is Dr. Christian Hester at the Little Rock Eye Clinic. Most patients suffering from dry eye disease can be divided into one of three categories. Dry, droopy, or dysfunctional. In this video, I will share examples from each category in available treatments. In this segment, we are examining a person who is dry. She is suffering from dry eye disease because she does not produce enough of the watery component of her tears. A special dye has been placed in her eye in order to stain the dry spots. The green dots are the areas of the surface of the eye that have eroded from dryness. Since first and second line treatments, such as over-the-counter, artificial tears, restasis, and punctal plugs have failed, this patient will be offered serum tears or the pros lens, which maintains a constant reservoir of fluid over the eye's surface. In this segment, we are examining a patient that is droopy. She is suffering from conjunctivocalasis, which is a redundancy of the transparent membrane that overlies the white part of the eye. The tears are trapped in the folds of tissue and cannot be properly distributed across the eye surface. A green dye has been placed in the eye and you can see how it is trapped between the folds of tissue. This condition commonly results in dry spots on the bottom of the eye's surface. The condition can be corrected with an in-office nip-tuck type procedure where the redundant tissue is removed with cautery. The discoloration of the white part of the eye resolves in a few weeks and is hidden by the eyelid in the meantime. We can see that the folds of tissue are now gone and the patient's tears can be normally distributed across the eye's surface. In this segment, we are examining a patient that is dysfunctional. He is suffering from meibomian gland dysfunction that has resulted in abnormally thick secretions from the tiny glands that reside just behind our eyelashes. This is resulting in an abnormal tear film and increasing eye inflammation. I have asked him to start warm compresses, lid scrubs, and to increase his consumption of omega-3 fatty acids in his diet. If he shows no improvement, we will consider a tetracycline antibiotic and steroid eye drops. Finally, in this segment, we are injecting Botox into the eyelid muscles of the patient in order to weaken the muscles responsible for blinking. This intervention results in a decreased blink force which will minimize trauma to the eye surface and allow it to heal from the damage caused by a dysfunctional blink. There are many causes of dry eye disease. As a result, a patient needs to undergo a specialized evaluation in order to determine the most effective treatment for him or her. If you are suffering from dry eye disease, I hope that we can help you at the Little Rock Eye Clinic. I cannot give enough thanks to my Cornea Fellowship mentor, Dr. Stephen Flugfelder, one of the world's experts in dry eye disease, and Dr. Michael Yin at the Baylor College of Medicine for training me in their advanced techniques in the management of dry eyes.